team that's coming uh, into Soldier Field and uh, bringing their rookie quarterback with them. And, you know, the Bears are in need of a win. You know, they're 3-3. Three and three. They've, they've lost. You know, they got off to a hot start, kind of settled down a little bit here. And I think the big issue is Talil Mack, I think, is, is questionable for this game with some sort of an injury. So, you know, if he doesn't play, that'll make things a little more comfortable for, for Sam Darnold. If he plays, then, you know, I don't think Darnold will – will feel very comfortable most of the day. So uh, whether Mac plays or not, I think the Bears just have a better roster and, and they'll find a way, uh, you know, to win this game at home and kind of, you know, right the ship a little bit. They're sitting at 500. Uh, I think they were three and one at one point. So they, they really need to uh, find their way again here. Uh, and I think they'll do it against the Jets for sure. Joining us now is Mo from the BS Sports Show. Uh, Mo, we're going to get into some uh, talk about the World Series here in just a minute, and we're going to get into uh, some betting stuff, and we're talking a little bit of uh, football. We were just talking a little bit of, about uh, the Bears and the Jets. Uh, obviously, the Bears is your your love team, if you will. Uh, <laughs> but uh, how are you, sir? Good. Actually, the, uh, the Bears are just a team I, I cover. The Colts are actually my team. Oh, okay. Well, there we go. Well, we're going to get into that one here. Just Why don't we just start there? Uh, Colts are at the Raiders. They are not at home this weekend because, well, the FFA is here, Future Farmers of America, and the president's going to be here tonight. So, I mean, heck, there's other things going on in Lucas Oil Stadium. So they got to they gotta head out to the Black Hole on a Halloween weekend. I can't think of a better place to go if you got to go somewhere on Halloween. Why not go to the Black Hole? We'll start with you, Mo. Uh, that didn't really sound very good. Uh, I hope I don't get in trouble for saying that. But the the Black Hole, Oakland, Oakland Raiders, and the, and the Indianapolis Colts. The Indianapolis Colts had a great win last week, even though it was only the Bills. It was a win, and I do think definitely they can beat the Raiders at home. Yeah, I mean, you know, it, it, the difference is I think you see the Colts who are trying to win football games and the Raiders who seem like they're not uh, at this point. Uh, you know, there were some questions whether uh, Adam Vinatieri would play. It looks like he's going to. Uh, looks like Jack Doyle will be back for the Colts. Uh, the Colts actually showed signs of a uh, of a running game last week, and you know Andrew Luck with you know the way he's been protected so far this year by this offensive line, uh, it, you know he's been able to make plays uh, when he's had guys on the field who can make plays. You know getting T. Y. Hilton back was uh, was nice. He's made uh, Eric Ebron look like uh, you know he should have still been in Detroit uh, catching football, like they shouldn't have got rid of him. Uh, I think this should be an easy win for the Colts. Uh, you know, there's uh, lots of questions everywhere on the Oakland Raiders, so I think it's a, it's a Colts victory in Oakland. Uh, Ed, what are your thoughts? Uh, the, the Colts at the Raiders. Yeah, uh, I, I like what Frank Reich has done with Luck. You know, he is being well protected, but some of that is scheme too in terms of getting rid of the ball a little more quickly. He's not holding on to the ball as long. And, you know, of course, a good running game helps keep your quarterback healthy too, and, and the Colts are doing that. And, you know, I think we talked earlier, you know, we're reaching the halfway point of the season. And, you know, the Colts have had some tough losses this year um, that, you know, now maybe they're kind of starting to learn how to win. That win over the Bills was, was big. And, and now you go in to play a team at one and five in the Raiders that Mo said doesn't seem to have any interest in winning. And he's right. Uh, you know, the way they're just kind of trading away some of their best players. So uh, I think this should be an easy win too for the Colts. Again, it's on the road, but, how much interest is there still in that black hole uh, of a team that is sitting at one and five Gruden's getting rid of, you know, players who a lot of those fans have jerseys of Amari Cooper and Khalil Mack are probably big Jersey sellers out there in the Bay area. And now they're not there. And pretty soon their team won't be either when they go to Vegas. So I'm not sure how big of a home field advantage that is for Oakland. So I think India win this game uh, fairly easily. They should. Well, certainly hope so. Certainly hope so, because then that was what we call a streak after that happens. Mo, uh, what, are, what are your thoughts on, as we, as we get ready to talk about uh, the Seattle Seahawks at the Detroit Lions? The Detroit Lions have improved themselves greatly. Matthew Stafford uh, and uh, uh, the bearded man with pencil uh, seem to start beginning to figure things out. What are your thoughts? Well, I mean, it just depends, I think, on what week that uh, we're watching where they figure things out. They get big wins, and they have some terrible losses. Uh, but, you know, it, Matthew Stafford uh, has had a, a glimpse of a running game at times this year, which has been nice. You know, we've seen him have a 100-yard rush a couple of times. Um, uh, it, it, overall game standpoint, uh, I, I think I probably like the Lions to win this game at home. But from a betting standpoint, uh, it's hard for me not to take the Seahawks getting points on the road. 
Uh, you know, Russell Wilson is still a threat whenever he's out there. Uh, you know, this seems like it would probably be a high-scoring game. Uh, Seattle's defense not great anymore. Uh, you know, and Detroit's defense has been known to give up a, a good number of points. So, uh, if you're betting on the game, I like the Seahawks and taking the points and, and probably the over. But I do think that Detroit uh, probably wins a close game. Yeah, and the, and the spread on that, I believe, is three uh, on that. And I'm still looking at the site that you sent me last night, uh, uh, Mo, and to show you how much I don't do betting. I'm winging it here when I'm looking at this. So I don't know exactly what I'm looking at. So if I give the wrong number, you you promptly put me in in my place. But I think that the spread is three. Okay, I'll, I'll, you, can, you can learn us both here. Okay, so it says uh, minus three, 49.5, O-U. Lions, 65%. Right. So, so the 49-and-a-half is the over-under of how many total points scored between both teams. Uh, the minus three is that the, the Lions are given three at home. You always look – don't look at the first number because that's always where it opened. Uh, and then the number, as, it's, uh, as it is, stands at this second, which it could change even during the show, uh, is the number. So the minus three right now is correct. Detroit is given three points at home, and the over-under uh, is that number. Got it. All right. Well, I'll keep that in mind as we get into our, our betting segment here in just a few minutes. Uh, Ed, uh, what are your thoughts? Uh, the, the Seattle Seahawks and the Detroit Lions, uh, what are your thoughts? Yeah, you know, that over-under number is interesting, and maybe you can get into it in the betting segment with Mo, because, you know, NFL games this year going into last weekend, I think that they were averaging about 48.6 points per game between the two teams. So, uh, I don't know if that over number number has come up, uh, you know, has risen because of that or not. But you know, forty nine and a half point over under on the Lions and the and the Seahawks seems like uh, you know kind of what the average has been this year in terms of team scoring points. So I think it will be a high scoring game. I think you know, Carry on Johnson has kind of been the key to the Lions' resurgence here. You know, they're giving him the ball. He had a 158 yards rushing, I think it was last week, and um, you know they're they're getting yards on the ground now. And again, the running game is huge, and I think you're seeing that's why Matt Stafford has been more effective too, is because they are mixing in the run. You know, they had that long streak where they didn't have a running back go over 100 yards, and Stafford had to do way too much. So now you're seeing a little bit more balance with the emergence of Carry On Johnson. I, you know, I think the Lions will win. I, you know, I don't because I like it being a home game. Um, but the Seahawks are playing better, and it's not going to be an easy win. And that line, of whatever it is, three and a half or three points, uh, you know, they, the Seahawks might be able to cover that, uh, even if the Lions were to win. All right, well, let's uh, get into some uh, talk about the World Series, and we'll get into our betting segment, and uh, we'll, we'll uh, toss in some uh, more NFL while we're there. And, Ed, you're more than welcome to stick around with us here. But we got to talk a little bit about this big win against the, the Dodgers, against the Red Sox. Uh, you could say that the Dodgers got a late win if you're in L.A. maybe, but if you're here in Indianapolis, you didn't get to bed till like 3 o'clock in the freaking morning. 18 innings, probably every World Series record as far as length of game, uh, change of players, uh, change of pitchers uh, was broken last night. Uh, I tell you what, it's the World Series. <laughs> but I tell you what, the Dodgers really showed they won it. Maybe they'll win tonight, and, uh, and uh, we'll see if we, they can tie it up. But uh, the Red Sox are hot, hot, hot. Uh, but at least the Dodgers were able to, to cool them down just a little bit in a huge win. Uh, at home in, in the Dodge last night, three to two in 18 freaking innings. That's two games, by the way. That's a double header if you want to look at it like that. Go ahead, Mo. Yeah, I mean, you know, first off, I want to say that I, I do despise the Dodgers and Red Sox both after doing that to me last night when I had to work this morning. Um, but you know, <laughs> what bothers me the most, I think, if I'm if I'm a Dodgers fan, is is the regression of Kenley Jansen, their closer. Uh, you know, he's had some issues, had to adjust medications he was taking uh, at this one point during the season, and he just he doesn't look as confident uh, to me as he did, you know, the past few years as I watched the Cubs play the Dodgers in the National League playoffs. So for me, uh, him giving up that home run in the eighth inning to tie the game, uh, you know, is concerning. The the Dodgers bullpen is not near as good as it was last year, uh, with you know Jansen not being as, as healthy and and uh, Mario being uh, signed by the Cubs last year. So uh, that would concern me, I think, if I'm a Dodgers fan at this point. 
And, you know, the analytics, I think, of the first couple of games you saw with Bellinger not playing and Muncy not playing, I think at this point you've got to throw that out the window, man. You put your best, your best players on the field, whether it's against a right-hander or a left-hander. I think that uh, really hurt the Dodgers the first couple of games. I don't like it when you're, you're going to play games, regardless of what the analytics say, when your best players are on the field. And I think that was a huge mistake on Dave Roberts' part. Uh, you know, the Dodgers have a little bit of momentum, but <clears throat> we'll be interested to see what happens tonight when all, you know, when you use so many players uh, in a game like last night. Uh, hopefully it'll be a decent game, but, uh, you know, sometimes it, it tends to be a lackluster game after a late game like this and another game the next day where you are pulling out all the stops because you're, you're, you're trying to win the World Series. But if you're the Dodgers, you have to stay in the series. So uh, we'll see what it's like. I think the Red Sox have too much firepower, and I think the Red Sox ultimately will win the World Series. Well, I absolutely think that you're right, but it is fun to see it. I'm a National League guy, obviously, being a Cardinal fan. Uh, I would have liked to see the Brewers get in it, uh, but at the end of the day, uh, it's the Dodgers and the Red Sox. uh, And uh, I tell you what, it's hard to root against uh, the Red Sox. Uh, Well, unless you're a Yankees fan, and it's very easy to root against the Red Sox. Uh, But the Red Sox are, are red hot and and I, I don't know that uh, that we see anything. And, you know, we might want to draw a comparison. We might be seeing a World Se- a New England World Series champion, and maybe, possibly, because it's New England, we might see a uh, Rams and, and Patriots uh, Super Bowl. Uh, yeah, maybe. Um, th- th- I, this might be a good time for me to jump off, actually, Tom, because I, I haven't watched more than – five minutes of the world series to be honest with you but I, I, i'll say this um a, a friend and colleague of mine who was in london covering uh sunday's game with the eagles and jaguars he he texted me this morning and he said he woke up in london this morning went down to the hotel restaurant and the world series game was still being was still on uh over there in london he, he said he couldn't believe it that he went to bed uh you know he woke up and the world series game was still going on so to me Baseball has, you know, to me, a real problem. I mean, who is up at that hour, unless you're a diehard fan or living regionally in Boston or Los Angeles to watch that game at what, whatever time it ended, 3 in the morning? I mean, that's just, a, that's just way too long. These start times for these World Series games are way too late. You're losing the younger generation kids that, that aren't going to care about baseball because they're not watching it. I mean, to me, they need to make some changes maybe play some games on the weekends and start, you know, an actual, you know, where you don't have to be a vampire to watch these games. You can actually sit on the afternoon and watch a world series game on a Saturday uh, or even late in the day. But I, I just think they need to start these games sooner. Uh, they're losing a fan base. Uh, baseball has a problem to me. I mean, these games take way too long, 18 innings aside with all the pitching changes and analytics and, you know, trying to work these walks and, uh, you know, it's just, it, to me, it's a problem. And I hate to see it because I love baseball. I love watching baseball. But, you know, I just I haven't had a whole lot of interest in this World Series. So um, I'll leave you on that note. Uh, we'll, we'll, and, uh, we'll, let, we'll let you go. Go ahead, Mo. And I have a quick question for you. I, I agree 100% with what you said. I, I have younger kids, though, and I think the one thing that, you know, I was ta- I have a 15-year-old, and we were talking this morning about it, that, you know, I agree it was way too long for a baseball game. And it, and it, but the one thing that, that she brought up was she liked the fact that there was a winner. You know, she's a big football fan, but her biggest uh, complaint this year has been, you know, the number of ties in the NFL after investing three and a half hours into a, a football game and not getting a winner. Is, is there any way that you see on the horizon that somehow, I mean, even if the NFL doesn't adopt the college overtime rules, that we, we get to where we have a winner? I think, you know, a few years back, for some, that hurt hockey when you would invest so much time uh, and, and not have a winner. Is there a way that the NFL fixes that problem? Yeah, that's a good question. I love the way college football settles ties, you know, with the 25-yard line. I know in high school, at least in Pennsylvania, they they put the ball at the 10-yard line uh, to determine a winner, which is, you know, that's even really a lot more fun to watch. But, uh, you know, you, you look at the, the, the pace of play in football, you know, the wear and tear on the bodies in the NFL and, I know they shortened the overtime to 10 minutes after they had put another 15 minutes up there. and uh, I think that has led to, I think, two ties this season, two games that have ended in a tie. And, and, and I agree with your daughter. I hated ties in the NHL. When you watch the NHL, I like that they have a winner. Um, I think the shootout's pretty cool to watch. So, yeah, maybe you're right, Mo. The NFL has to find a way to have a winner. You know, you don't like ties. Uh, nobody likes a tie. So they do have to find a way, but I, I just don't know how. I don't know what the answer is because, like I said, it is such a, a grueling game, a physically played game, that to add another, 
you know, however long it takes to find a winner could be detrimental to the health of these players. So uh, maybe it is time to look at that college rule. I love that college rule at the 25-yard line. But I think the NFL tries to keep itself separate from college. So maybe. 